Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and for those of you who are willing to come back up the hill for the last time uh, today, uh, maybe not this week for you, we're very grateful and appreciative, especially because this is going to be a panel for the current cohort, the 2023 Trusted CIs Fellows Panel. Um, my name is Rick Wagner. I work at the San Diego Supercomputer Center as the CTO. And if anyone has heard me say that several times is because I need to remind myself. It's only my fourth week in the job. So uh, I'd like to thank again the opportunity by Trusted CI for me to moderate this panel because I have been a fellow um, and I think this is an exceptional program and I'll say that several times as well. So this will be very simple and straightforward. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about the program and I will introduce you to the, hey, <laughs> don't give him the answers. And, uh, he's late to class. <laughs> ah, he admits the ice cream. Okay, so <laughs> we admit. Um, I'll introduce the uh, current uh, the fellows, and then we'll uh, have them share their experiences. And then I would like to ensure that if anyone has questions for them, uh, that they have an opportunity to ask. Um, and for those of you on Zoom, uh, Jeanette will be uh, monitoring the chat and will loudly interrupt me if I ignore your question. So, so uh, this is the slide that I updated for this year to introduce. Uh, I'm very sorry, that's Heather getting her face, pretty sure that's Heather, um, getting her face kind of blocked off by the screen there. Um, you can see all of these uh, incredible people on the, the website for the fellows. So the fellows program has been going since 2019. And I'm going to use the word diversity in the description of the people that present, not just in the way we traditionally have been thinking about diversity in terms of gender, race, heritage, um, uh, other aspects, but of the roles they play within the research and security um, or administration of our institutions. Um, the purpose of the fellows are to bridge the gaps between those doing research and those securing research are those providing infrastructure for research. And so uh, if you have a moment, I would encourage you to go back and look through the previous years, um, not just because of how incredibly good looking we are, but to see the various positions that they have and the many places that they have been. So as I was talking with uh, Jim earlier today, one of the fellows, one aspect that the fellows are providing now is a, a large group of individuals throughout the US academic and NSF uh, infrastructure landscape who have put in time and effort to improve cybersecurity and to be the bridge between various roles that traditionally did not have them. Um, I, I, so I think it is a wonderful program and I hope that it continues on uh, for many more years to come. I was actually kind of frustrated last night as I was updating the slide because I had to compress 2019, 2020 and 2021 over to the left to make room for 2022. And now I'm kind of worried about doing this next year when I add 2023. So if I'm the panel moderator for next year, I would ask the trusted CI updates this page for me. Um, <laughs> so it, this program runs throughout the year. Um, applications open when they open. And then they, in addition to participating in weekly, weekly, yeah, weekly, yeah, uh, a weekly seminar where they learn various aspects of research cybersecurity from experts in different areas. Uh, it also covers travel to this event, to PERC, and then to educational or growth opportunities of the participants choice. So it not only gives them a landscape of the environment that we're working in, but it gives them the opportunities to grow professionally. And so as again, as I will say, this is, I think this is an exceptional program and please encourage you think about yourselves or your staff and whether or not they would benefit from participating in it um, as a professional development and a growth opportunity. With that, uh, this is the 2023 uh, Trusted CI Fellows. Please give them a hand. For, uh, Thank you. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to call on each of them briefly and introduce them um, and then basically ask them a question about their experience. Um, and as we were saying, I am going to start with Professor David White um, because David White is a professor of parks and recreation and travel. And uh, one, if you would, and management, sorry, uh, if you would briefly describe your role and then its relationship to security. 
Sure. So um, I have had a kind of a varied academic career where I was five years at NOAA contractor there in Charleston as a uh, building data and information management systems for research, uh, enterprise-based systems. And then uh, I was recruited by Clemson basically to do the same in a cyber infrastructure group uh, with central IT. Well, about, I don't know, it was 2013, 2014, we started partnering with Parks Rec Tourism Management. And I started helping them with various projects. And then an opportunity came up to start going to Africa, Eastern Africa, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, Tanzania, to start to help build um, data management plants, generally focused on geospatial analyses. And then um, that's kind of how I kind of went over to as a research professor in, in PR Tim. He was like, hey, we really like your stuff. So we really need you. So that's how I switched from uh, kind of a central IT staff role to uh, uh, faculty. But how I got into this program was this past summer, not this summer, the previous summer, I'd actually had an interest. I still had interest in cybersecurity, data, data information management systems. And so I decided to take a, a secure, cybersecurity 101 course at NC State over the summer. And then right after that, my former uh, boss reached out to me. She says, hey, you should think about this program. So that's how I ended up applying for the program. But from a personal perspective of how I think my role at Clemson is it's understanding the the need for cybersecurity experts and specialists. Um, I think I bring a kind of a unique skill set, and and so I when I wrote up my application it was about how I can support the campus and building out uh, infrastructure knowledge, supporting uh, cyber cybersecurity plans and whatnot. So, sure. thank you. Yep. Yeah. So uh, with that, uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is a director, uh, I believe also still 75% professor, uh, Rosmaz Rosmazan Egun. Um, and uh, I believe we were talking earlier, uh, I believe it's on, um, you work 150%? Is that Was that you <laughs> were talking to? Yeah, that's me. So I work 75% faculty plus 75% as research competing. <laughs> so... You know, I joined uh, Kennesaw State University uh, as a director of research computing uh, three years ago. Uh, previously, I was just a faculty member in another institution, uh, just doing research and teaching. And when I became a research computing director uh, in my institution, I thought that I was going to just uh, manage the HPC uh, in my institution. And... Uh, in my first meeting with the vice president for research, uh, she told me that Ramazan, you know, uh, we have a project in mind. We are submitting projects to NIH and uh, we need HIPAA compliance. And uh, HIPAA is new to me because I'm in computers and I'm not in the health. I know what HIPAA is in general, but I don't know the details. And you have one year <laughs> and I said, I didn't say no, of course, you know, I, uh, you know, I started working on it. And then meanwhile, you know, 2020, three years ago, so that was the time of pandemic. Uh, so you cannot go anywhere, you cannot meet any people. The only thing that worked, I think, great for me is everything was online. So all conferences were online. So I could attend any conference, you know, that I wanted to, you know, from my office. So firstly, my uh, colleagues suggested that I should attend the PER conference. So I started attending that one. And then I started to see uh, there are CARC people, Campus Research Consortium people. So I met some of them. So I participated, uh, became a member of that group. And then uh, I started to hear about Trusted CI around that time. So uh, I was seeing some presentations. I was seeing presentations from Anurag Shankar at that time. And uh, we came to a point that uh, this is not something that we can do by ourselves. So I talked to my vice president for research. We need a consultant. So I talked to the Anurag and Anurag, we need help. Could you help us? And he said, yes. So we worked with him for about you know six months initially, but he was always engaged with us later on as well. And that's, you know, uh, how I got engaged. So the problem that I have is, you know, I don't have the cybersecurity background. Of course, I have the basics. So we always have questions. And the questions, uh, the answers to our questions are not in, in our institution. 
So I realized that we, I have to be a part of a larger community. And this Trust CI Fellow was a good program that I realized. And then I applied, and that's how I got into this program. Sorry for a little bit longer introduction, but that's how <laughs> I got into it. Thank you. Um, yeah, I figured out the pattern I'm going to use. Uh, so uh, Andrew Ferbert, uh, who is the Plat Platform Services Manager and a Wiz at Trivia, um, and is also at SDSC. We um, only came in 10th place, Rick. You came in 10th place. I left. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I propped Andrew up only a little bit. Um, Andrew, uh, do you feel that people should have the uh, appropriate experience and uh, to do the... <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, my, my role at San Diego Supercomputer Center is platform services. So we are um, not in charge of HPC. We work with uh, small groups, small clusters, but we need to be generalists. And what I've always liked about this community, about going to the EDUCAUSE uh, Cybersecurities Professionals and Privacy Conference, um, which I've been to a few times, and PERC, and, is, and this is surrounding myself with people who may not be embedded in security teams, but need to know how to handle security, how to build a system that meets the needs of the researcher because they're the ones paying the bill, but still have all of the boxes checked that they need to for their compliance and uh, you know, still making it a usable system. It would be easier for us to rely on our security team, both at SDSC or at UC San Diego, but we can't. We have to be aware of our risks for our researchers and layer that on top of the expertise that the SOC teams have and the network operations teams have to, to just provide that, that layer of, of knowledge. I think Andrew's comments represent what we've seen a lot with the folks who attend here is being willing to learn and engage to be, provide more effective support um, to the research community. Um, in all ways. And that's why I, I do, like I talk about the diversity of experience and backgrounds and roles. I think that's been the strong benefit of this. And I'm being yeah, clearly hugely flattering to trusted CI, but for good reason. So um, with that, I will turn to Nick Harrison, who two things. One, you're already an information security officer. What are you doing here? And two, <laughs> thank you for, as a community college alum, thank you for supporting the community college system. Oh, well, yes, I'm, I'm also spent my time with the community college before I started working for the community college. Um, so before I was an information security officer, I was actually the director of cyber infrastructure um, at the Renaissance Computing Institute. Uh, one of my fellows had an image up there on one of the slides, and before I left to come to the community college system, she said that she was having a great experience with the Trusted CI Fellows Program. I made a mental note of that before I then came over to my current job. And I knew that when I put in that application, I was like, I don't know if they're going to want me there because this probably sounds a lot like what I'm already doing. So thank you for that. I, I really appreciate it. And one of the things that I've really uh, enjoyed about this year and, and just hearing the various voices and their experiences is that uh, it helped me realize that one of the challenges I come across in my job of you know helping people strengthen their security stances is making these challenges relevant to them. It's not always immediately apparent why someone might need to apply patches to their servers, for example, when it's running just fine. And to you know introduce the inconveniences that security often bring, uh, that can naturally just raise the question for why. So one thing I really like about you know participating in this community is that it drives home the point that the ultimate goal of securing cyber infrastructure is just to align yourself with the mission of what that organization is trying to do. And research is certainly the mission here and uh, something that I've actually, you know, helped remind my coworkers about. It's not just checking boxes. It is helping the overall mission succeed. I, it, so as I mentioned, I'm a community college alum and I, I was at the Scenic, which is the California Regional uh, Network Provider uh, Conference uh, last year. I believe it was last year, could have been this year, I, I lose track. But, and I was talking with some folks who are IT administrators from the community colleges about the security controls that they were starting to lay down. And I basically asked that question because it was, a, it was an issue around Wi-Fi, right? Is 
you know, imagine being a adult community college student with a limited amount of time or the spouse of a community college student and wanting to be on campus and gaining access to Wi-Fi to register for classes or potentially do your job while supporting your spouse. They were addressing things like potentially locking out anyone who didn't have a credential. They were not, you know, like, should we provide free and open Wi-Fi? And I really asked them, I was like, look, what is your mission of the community college versus what is the risk to your infrastructure? Can you provide an isolated network so that anyone walking onto your college who's more than likely meant to be continuing their education or supporting someone um, who is continuing their education uh, can achieve their goals? And they, you know, they very much got it. And then they get to go back and think about whether or not they can implement that kind of policy. But this is... This is the thing like that when I looked at the framework and began to understand that the mission focus um, really changes how you approach your risk management and the things that you implement. Um, thank you. Uh, okay, so Dr. Gary Andrews, um, why would hackers care? Uh, Rogers, sorry. <laughs> so the two guys at the end, they're just gonna answer together. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Gary Rogers. Um, why would hackers want to get into a large supercomputer that's next door to NCCS? Or not next door, but... Well, I'll, I'll start off with saying why I kind of applied for this. Um, <laughs> so I have, you know, I see a lot of familiar faces out um, in the audience from my time with uh, TerraGrid and Exceed. Um, I've worked with, you know, a lot of people from the operational security side. Um, and what I'm mostly, you know, wanting to, to take that next step and my uh, career is more of the policy side. Um, you know, we're looking at a lot more regulations, um, you know, CUI, FERPA, um, 171, 53, you know, all, all these things. And it's, you know, we see a lot more researchers wanting to do some of this stuff. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a hard jump for somebody from a social sciences. And, you know, to tell them no is the easy answer. And then, but to tell them yes, this is the path we'll have to take is, you know, the, the harder path, but it's, it's better. Um, but yeah, people would love to, to get on there and, you know, run whatever cryptocurrency of the day you know, or whatever they want to do. So, um, but I, I do, I have appreciated all the, the weekly meetings and, you know, meeting everybody. This conference is probably the uh, most interactive conference that I've been to in a really long time. Um, the networking here has been tremendous. Um, one of the things that, you know, I've heard a thousand times and, you know, I think that's the, the good takeaway is expanding your layer of trust with people. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with some of the same security people on the exceed side for, you know, 13, 14 years now. Um, but then just seeing like the different groups that they are connected to that I had no idea was kind of out there. So it's, you know, building that extra layer of, of trust out there. And, you know, it's better to have that trust laid out yesterday than it is trying to build it tomorrow. So. Thank you for uh, for having me here. Yeah, I I completely agree that the I didn't realize when I was reading it that the framework and its description of how to think about things, putting control sets at the bottom, having a mission focus is like, wow, that is kind of a mindset that you can apply to other areas because when you're a more junior staff member, words like policy, it's like it's the document you read. And it's very different than thinking about it as like, this is the landscape of things that people expect me to do. And I have to interpret that and turn that into actions for myself and my staff and others. So going through this specifically has had other benefits as I approach work. And I, I think it does for others. It's like, how do I focus the strategic planning that I do? So um, I'm not saying that this should be the career development path for a lot of folks, but it is a model for one. Um, so I completely agree. All right. Well, uh, Professor Sussman, uh, it is very good to talk to you again. Um, what? Uh, actually, I didn't check your your role um, at the University of Southern Maine. Besides being a professor, um, what is your active research area? Primarily teaching. Like, what what brought you to this? Um, so, I I have a very circuitous role um, road to to this this particular role. I started um, with twenty four years in the army doing uh, IT. I did uh, IT and data. And of course, cyber is part of that, you know, it was cyber before cyber was cool. Uh, and to give you a, a flavor for that, um, I ran the data systems at the White House. And if you ever want to buy me a bourbon, I'll tell you how all of Oliver North got caught. Um, <laughs> but um, so 24 years in, in uh, the military doing um, IT and I, information security. Then it pivoted into private sector and um, at Cisco Systems, I did engineering services for DOD. So, uh, and then my post 9-11 GI Bill was running out and uh, 
all of you are too young to really understand this, but at some point in your life, there's going to be this pivot where you trade success for significance. And so for me, it was, I wanted to give back. I have had this great career as a practitioner and I wanted to give back. So um, my research areas are in cyber education, awareness, um, and we do a lot of um, programs where we get the students out in the community um, doing um, workshops for vulnerable populations and things like that. Um, the reason I wanted um, to be part of this group is that um, Anshul, who um, presented that first day, she's doing some great things with social engineering and social engineering CTFs. And I was reading her papers and said she was a trusted CI fellow and she talked really glowingly about it. And being, you know, this old person who's new in academia, I thought, okay, well, this is a great place to, to get um, into the network of, um, of cybersecurity academics, experts um, who can help me help my students. Uh, and it's been very much that, you know, for someone from an R2, uh, you know, we, we don't have HPCs at R2s, you know? So we're not always at these conferences because they don't think of us. And so as coming from an R2 and being here is tremendously exciting and really opens up things that I hadn't thought about. So I'm really glad I'm here. Well, it is amazing when your GI Bill is down to three years time remaining, how quickly you can go uh, through community college and graduate from UCSD. Um, <laughs> I did graduate from UCSD in under two years, and, and trust me, there was a lot of coffee and lack of sleep uh, involved with that. Um, but really, I think the networking part of it is critical. Um, uh, on a previous slide, uh, Unal Tatar, uh, who is a professor uh, at SUNY, um, I can't remember exactly which one of the SUNYs, um, I actually listened to him on a podcast about rich risk management and actuarial tables and stuff like that, um, because I was interested in that for risk analysis. And so knowing I was looking for him and I happened to find the podcast he was on and I was like, this is an interesting connection. So uh, it's amazing how it comes about. Um, so Huang Kao, uh, did I get close? Yes. Okay, yes. so uh, research scientist at NCSA. And I think I remember seeing uh, that you actually, some of your research is in cybersecurity as well. Yes, yes. So, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Phuong Cao, I'm a research scientist at NCSA. Um, so my uh, first start with uh, security, uh, when I was a student in Vietnam, uh, I spent a month to do a homework and a computer virus uh, wiped it out. And uh, it took me another month to, uh, to redo that. So that's how I got uh, started with uh, security. And uh, my, I think my deep root with security start in NCSA. Uh, where I see many of the uh, scientific applications uh, in an open network environment. It is very challenging to, uh, to protect those uh, applications uh, while enable the scientists to do their work. And I see the first hand my colleagues at NCSA uh, and many of you as well in security operation. Uh, it is a, a very hard job. Uh, it's difficult to sleep at night and it also takes a toll on mental health of some people, but it's important job. And uh, in the last, uh, I think during the pandemic, I start seeing many of the uh, seminar of Trusted CI. Uh, I think you have a, a great lineup of speakers and I learned a lot from that. And uh, that's when I decide to uh, participate in the program. Uh, most of my knowledge uh, was in the technical side. So, uh, uh, when I join here, uh, what I learn is about the uh, broader impact of security uh, in education, in societal impact. And I think I have learned more about the program and the impact of security in uh, less than one year uh, uh, compared to um, all of the time before that. And uh, I have a lot of idea. So this is a great program to uh, bounce idea around with, uh, with different people and get feedback. So uh, if you're interested in uh, collaboration, so uh, let me know. I have a poster um, posted and you can also uh, look it up on my website. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, 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 the connection and the, like, the chance to go through the weekly seminars, it, most of us work within our niche. And even if we are engaged in security in some way, we're still focused within our particular niche. Getting the breadth and exposure 
uh, to know other areas that might interest you, other connections, stuff like that. I do think that is a real strong value of the program. Um, we have a little bit of time left. I think we could do one or two questions for the panelists if there is anyone, um, in which case I will have to steal a microphone. I can take more time. Uh, I think Jim is still working on his slides. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. If there basically, so if there are any questions, um, I'd be glad to run around with a microphone. Or I could be like Ivan Schuler, um, professor. Does that, so. It's okay. I told them beforehand that um, they should not feel judged for your lack of interest. <laughs> What about a quick show of hands of anyone that you are thinking of recommending this program to if you if you know of anyone who might be interested in this? I would also recommend more people from the West Coast because I was the only person west of the Mississippi. <laughs> so during our weekly calls, I would say good morning because it was still morning and they would all say good afternoon. <laughs> and that is um, the interesting thing is like uh, with me being back at SCC, we also had Melissa Cragen last year. Um, so we've had representation every year, which, and that's saying, so basically UCSD or an SDSC specifically have been engaged, but if we're only seeing, um, like no one from West of the Mississippi, like, yeah, we do need to look at pushing, you know, beyond the Midwest. I love the Midwest. I used to work for the Midwest, but, uh, and I actually do like seeing other, uh, previous cohort members, uh, in the audience. And if I've missed someone else, I apologize because I don't have my glasses on. Give me other no, I have gifts and some final comments. Okay. All right. So um, let me do uh, the gifts. So here, I actually, I have one of these. Uh, so this is uh, Ramazan's. Um, these are blocks for the desk. Um, and I keep this in my office very happily because, again, this is a positive experience. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you should thank, of course, Diana. Um, yes. Keeps everything. <laughs> okay. Um, please keep your eye on the Trusted CI website. Be on the mailing list. Uh, applications are opening up next spring, um, and I think as you saw, the slide I had had our camera remember like you know almost thirty people on it, um, and it's growing. And this is becoming a cohort of connections uh, throughout the U.S. that we should keep increase it, uh, increasing it. And the you know, uh, to steal someone else's words, champion, champion, be the champion on your campus for cybersecurity. Um, with that, I don't think we have any time left for Q and A. We should answer earlier. So, Jim, um, I'll turn it over to you. You're welcome. Okay.